Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another video at my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to talk you through the creation of this watercolor lettering piece. I made this for my friend Jennifer McGuire, whose birthday is today. So happy birthday, Jennifer. Um, I wanted to create this phrase that she says all the time on her blog. I think she even has it trademarked. And I'm going to give it to her in person today, which will be really special. So I started out on my iPad, and this is a sped up process of what happened on my iPad when I was coming up with the lettering for this piece. And um, I did a lot of different layers and sketching and trying to figure out where I wanted those loops and swatches. And eventually I came across this idea of having the loop coming off the letter N on the very last line, creating a heart, which is perfect for Jennifer because she loves to put lots of hearts in her card making and in her, in her uh, crafts. So after I had the lettering piece designed, I printed it out, and now I'm going to move to actually creating this in watercolor. So I have my printout, and it's cut to 8 by 10. I made it that size so that she can frame it um, and with whatever frame she's, she'd like. And I'm taping my printed piece to the, to the back of this watercolor paper. I'm going to trace it, and in order to help me trace and have the design perfect, I'm going to use a light pad. I got this light pad off Amazon. I think when I bought it a couple years ago, it was about $30. It's been completely worth it. I use it quite a bit. So what this does is the light underneath comes through, and it makes it so I can see the design, and I don't have to use any pencil marks on my actual watercolor paper. So I'm going to tape this down so it doesn't move around. And then I'm going to take some drawing gum, and this is a liquid masking fluid. I'm going to use a tiny paintbrush, which I've prepped with a little bit of dish soap and water. That just helps protect the bristles. And I actually ended up painting the drawing gum for a long, long time, so my brush still got a little bit gummy. But I did discover that as long as I um, cleaned it off rather quickly after I finished painting the drying gum that I was able to rub out a lot of that drying gum that had dried using a little bit of that soap. So just warm water, really gentle rubbing with the dry, with the soap and it got all the drying gum out of my brush. So I think I spent about 25 minutes painting all of these letters. I wanted to be really precise, make sure I kept the same width of line as I painted all of these lines. So the drying gum or the liquid masking fluid is going to create white areas on the watercolor paper so that I can paint over the top with different colors and the area underneath the drying gum is preserved. So I let that dry completely and then I took all the, the tape off so that I could take the printout from underneath. And then I taped it down to a hard board. I'm going to add a lot of water to this and so I want to make sure that as it dries, it dries flat. So I'm going to use my Magello Mission Gold watercolor. This is my favorite watercolor palette. And I'm going to start out by putting a really nice thick coat of clean water over the top of this. Now, getting your paper wet is going to help the edges around this whole design stay really soft. And it's going to encourage the colors to really flow and blend with each other. Also, I want you to take note that I'm not taking the color outside of this lettering um, as far when I have it as full strength on my brush. I actually bring the color in mostly right on top of the lettering and then I switched my brush and my bucket of water and then softened the edge going out. I really want to make sure that the color that's added is mostly right on top of the letters so that I have the opportunity to fade out the color past the edge of the letters. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. And I'm making sure that I'm adding colors next to each other that are next to each other on the rainbow. So this pink red shade, like magenta going into the orange, and then I'm going to add some yellow. And this yellow is really bright and vibrant. It was really intense. I wasn't planning on it being so intense. So I actually grabbed a paper towel and kind of sopped up some of that color just to try to soften it because that yellow was pretty intense and it really didn't take much of the color off. Like it was on the paper, it wasn't coming off. But I did eventually, um, I, I was eventually able to manipulate the color and I brought some of this nice, bright, vibrant green in and it kind of masked a little bit of that yellow. 
I then brought in a little bit of blue and I'm running out of space here, but I do want the blue to sort of merge with that pink. And I'm actually gonna bring in a little bit of purple as well to help get those colors moving. Now in the very center where all of these colors meet, that is an opportunity for mud. Because as you might know, if you do a lot of painting or color mixing, when you put all the colors on top of each other, you can get a really muddy gray icky color. And I want this to be nice and bright and vibrant. So I'm going to dab off some of that color in the center and kind of control where the color meets. And I was able to really walk back that grayish brown shade that was kind of coming into play there. And I was also able to bring in a little bit of that pink color right in the center because the yellow, orange, and purple, which were kind of around the center area, all of those colors blend well with pink. So that was a great way to kind of manipulate that area and make sure I didn't have a muddy mess there in the center. So now I'm just doing a little more dabbing of color, putting a little bit of water around the edges. I wanna make sure that it fades off to a nice, um, very pale color. I want the, the entire design to be in the center of this eight by 10 piece of watercolor paper. And I don't want any color actually touching the edge of the paper. I wanna have a nice big wide white area around the outside. So I'm gonna use my heat tool to dry this. This is just to speed up the drying process, but you could definitely let something like this air dry and it would look beautiful. So the colors do fade back quite a bit. They're super bright and vibrant while the paint is wet, but as soon as you dry it off, it kind of fades back a little bit. Now, looking at the final piece, which is very, very bright and colorful, you would never know that it was even more saturated and colorful before it dried. I'm now using an adhesive eraser just to pick up this drying gum. Now, if you don't have one of these, um, you can actually use your fingertip and gently rub your finger over this kind of rubbery substance, and it starts to peel up off the surface of the watercolor paper. So that is the finished piece. I do want to caution you if you use drying gum, you want to make sure that the paper is always dry before you remove it. That really helps it come out and I look absolutely perfect. So happy birthday, Jennifer. I love you. I can't wait to see you. And thank you guys so much for watching today. I've got three more videos on screen for you. And also don't forget to subscribe and like this video. And if you're looking for any of the supplies I used, um, just look down at the video description. I will have them linked to online stores. Once again, thanks so much for watching and I will catch you guys very soon.